Turn your Bible quickly to the book of Genesis chapter 4. I need to welcome you to the house of God. In the book of Genesis chapter 4, this, at this time, the fall had set in with his attendant liabilities. Uh, and we see what we call somewhat of the rise of technology. Different kinds of technologies were being sampled in order to define life after the fall. We must understand the implication of what happened in the Garden of Eden when Adam decided to sell us out in an act of rebellion. Adam's life and times modeled the principle and the principle that was modeled through the life of Adam was the principle of rebellion. It was because of the extent to which his rebellion went that Jesus had to condescend from his status and the privileges associated with his divinity in order for him to number as a man for the purpose of modeling a different principle contrary to the principle that Adam modeled. Adam modeled rebellion and Jesus modeled obedience so that we'll have a reference point to understand the requirement of the kingdom of God. And so in the book of Genesis chapter 4, we see uh, the rise of various forms of technology, an attempt to sustain life after the fall. First of all, we see that Cain decided to separate himself from every possibility of colliding with the presence of God and departed from where God used to come and decided to go far away to establish a city. A city that was going to operate on a philosophy that is apart from God. He was trying to generate a new system of existence. And so he was weary of operating within the scope within the context of the laws that God had given. And right now he was going to adventure himself and try to invent a civilization that can be sustained apart from God. And so the Bible reveals that Cain departed from the presence of God. Are you still here with me? <laughs> you know, hallelujah. Some guys went for a crusade, and when they went for a crusade, they were trying to fix their um, Calvary, their crusade Calvary, and they were trying to gazette the console, the sound console. And while they were doing that, they just decided to go around the environs to invite the people for the crusade. And they went two by two, and it happened to be that a young man and his partner entered into a place they never knew that the visitor, the the house they visited was the house of Anesimo. Glory. <laughs> and when they came, the Anesimo now came out, asked them their mission and all of that. And they told him they came for a crusade rally to preach Jesus, to the deliverance of the people, and all that stuff. Somehow he got interested. And then he gave them his ears. Hallelujah. Amen. Give them attention. Oh my God. Things are moving in the spirit. Moving heavy in the spirit. Hallelujah. And so, there's a more decided to submit himself to the message that these guys brought. At the end of their presentation, he broke down in tears. Why? That was too dramatic. He told them, he used to be a pastor. So a long story evolved. <laughs> what was the problem? The guy was facing hardship and his spirit whispered so strong into his ears and said, if Jesus really cares for you, he will not allow you to go through this situation. And he believed the spirit and decided to just like Cain did, he left, he departed from the presence of God and went to a land where God would not interfere with his existence. 
Are you, are you here with me? The guy decided to depart from God. That he would never serve God again all his life. Okay, so the two guys went to the organizers, the big boys of the crusade, and they told them, this is what happened. We met this guy. The guy gave his life to Christ. So the big men of the crusade drove to his house to confirm the information. And so when the crusade started, they drove again to pick. There's a motto crusade ground. And he participated in the crusade that day. He was crying all through. He said, okay, there's morning session. He said, it's coming. But uh, when he slept that night, that was his last night. Now, you know, it was because of his faithfulness before that God had to look for a way to save him. Hallelujah. You know God keeps records. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, so this guy, because Cain was also somebody that was familiar with the presence of God. He was being discipled to be able to handle things in God's realm. And now he had come to a point where he decided to desert the presence of God to try his hands in establishing a civilization apart from God. So that's the scenario. Are you with me now? Now, there are different technologies that humankind decided to try out to see if it has any form of hope, if there's any form of sustainability that could come by reason of these new inventions. So this Genesis chapter 4 captures several inventions that precipitated in, 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 in order uh, after the fall in man's desperate attempt to establish life apart from God. So the Bible says in verse 16, oh my God, are you telling me something? All right. There is a lady, Christy, if Christy comes here, tell her I have a seat for her in the front. Okay? Tell all the ushers. Ask any late comer. There is a lady. A bit fair in complexion. All right? I heard she traveled from Abakeleke to come here. Yes. I have been in touch with the elder brother. Now we must ensure she receives from God what we have been disturbing God to receive on her behalf. Hallelujah. And just in case your name is Christy, maybe it's your day. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch and he built the city and called the, the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Irad and unto and Irad begat Mehujael, and Mehujael begat Methusael, and Methusael begat Lamech. And Lamech took unto him two wives, and the name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other was Zilha. You see, I, I, this guy, you are, you are not with me. You are not, you have, you are lost in my reading. Because what Cain is trying to experiment, stay with me, stay with me. What Cain is trying to experiment is the possibility of establishing a civilization apart from God. And now when we see the family chain, the family chain coming down, and when he got to Lamech, Lamech pioneered his fantasies. And Lamech was the father of all polygamies. And just in case you came from a polygamous family, where your dad sneaks out in the night to look upon something else. He was not the first to do that. There was a pioneer that broke ties with every form of reason in order for him to pioneer something that has never happened before. But you see, it was in a civilization that was designed apart from God. There were no restraints. There were, there, there, there were, no, there were no righteous bands. You know, the Bible says that, that the Lord... The, the Lord constraineth us. He, he, God, he does what? At the end of the day, your walk with God will lead you to a path that is narrow and tight. Hallelujah. Because as you grow with him, he constrains you. As you grow with him, he constrains you. And that's how the kingdom and the government of God will begin to operate in your life. Hallelujah. 
Several things I had to give away. Several things I had to leave. Not sinful things as it were. I, you, you may not know, but I played soccer once in my life. I played, played number 10, a midfielder. I know Chief Don doesn't believe all this. <laughs> I was, I, I played number 10. I was an enterprising midfielder. This report, occasion in all kinds of attack systems. <laughs> Glory to God. And suddenly the great one comes and says, no more soccer. No more. Now he didn't say that to everybody. He, in fact, he didn't say that to everybody. That, so, but for me, I can't even, I haven't obeyed and tapped into the grace that makes me obey. I don't even watch Arsenal and so all of that had to be blotted out. If not, the lover, I was a lover of soccer. And God knew that there was a tendency for me to now have a God of soccer. And so we saw those wires and he decided to bridle the possibilities and to put me on a path that is narrow. Dealings of the Holy Spirit anticipate uh, uh, the manifestations of the superfluities of your flesh. And God will bridle it by instructions. And at the end of the day, only a tight pathway will be left. Where we are fully sold out to the Holy Ghost. And he's the only personality that operates our system. We no longer serve the flesh. We no longer serve sin. We no longer serve the world. We no longer serve Satan. And we just have one God. And his name is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So, if your life is still full of activity, you can still touch this, you can still look upon this, you can say, oh my, you are just starting the journey. And maybe you have not allowed the Holy Spirit the right of way to begin to administer uh, his protocol. But if you do, we will end up the same way on a tight path, on a narrow path. Hallelujah. He will cut off all the activities and what will be left is just obedience. The same principle that was modeled in the life of Jesus Christ. I know you don't like my, <laughs> my sermon, but amen. Hallelujah. Uh, we preach even if people's face, uh, you know. I went somewhere, it was a Chinese church. You know what they call Chinese? You are not with me. You are not. Chinese. Uh, it's a panache church. Panache. Chinese. Glory. Okay, let me be plain to you. In a Chinese church, you don't mention demons, you don't mention sin, and you don't mention poverty. Glory. <laughs> you <don't... laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. So the Chinese people got the wrong preacher. Because <laughs> hey, I will not start by mentioning it. We'll go somewhere. We we'll won't get lost in the scriptures. And then when we begin to pick the tools, the scriptures will pick it by itself. May the Lord help our generation. We must realize that in keeping with the need for us to be consistent with a tight pathway, there is an administration that God put in place to ensure that we all end up that way. And that administration is called the cross. It's an implement, an instrument of government. Hallelujah. The cross is, is, is an object of verdict. And the proclamation of the cross is debt to everything that is of the old creation. The cross does not negotiate. The cross does not modify. The cross does not approximate. The cross only declares and it has only one nomenclature. And that is what? Debt. So when lust is rising, what does this cross say? When a strange and non desire is rising, what does the cross say? This is of the old creation. Oh my, if you don't know God, you might not understand the reason for the book of Leviticus. Because at the end of the book of Leviticus, you would think everywhere is stained by blood. There is blood everywhere. Blood. God is trying to teach us about his justice system. All right? The realm of the mortal is different from the realm of men. Just in case you drove a 2003 Toyota Matrix vehicle into this place, it can impress men 
it doesn't impress the immortals. Uh, hallelujah. In fact, if God did not reveal to us what can impress him, we would not even know. Because he's so deep and his realities are so vast. And so he shows us the kind of life we will live that can give him glory. That life is a life uh, that is subject to that cross. It kills everything of the old creation and it launches a new possibility, a new reality that is resurrected by the power that quickens that which is dead. It's on that template, on that frequency, in that crucible that we live as Christians today. And it doesn't matter whether you have become finished. The cross, if the cross is taken from the scriptures, Christianity becomes a cult, religious cult. There are seven things that if you take from our doctrine, what we are teaching is a teaching of Ezemo. One of them is the cross. The cross is the great divide between the old creation and the new creation. And in order for you to transit from this side to this side, what is there? You need to die. Right? You are not with me. You see, unfortunately for us, what happened when we transited, your spirit went first. So your spirit died. And then his spirit becomes the only possibility through which you can be resurrected. Huh? Because his spirit is a custodian of eternal life. And eternal life is still life in the face of death. And so when your spirit transited through the cross and received the judgment of the cross, because you had to believe in Jesus, believe that he was raised from the dead, that no power of death has cognizance where he is mentioned anymore. You believe in his immortality. It is by the strength of the same immortality that you believed in that you, you revived on this side. So every creature that makes it to this side only revives by reason of the quickening spirit. He is the lead way of the technology that is built this way. Are you with me now? Now, so your spirit passed through the cross and he appeared here. Now what is happening to you, your soul is going through it. Every element of your existence is going to go through that <laughs> and that sieve before you appear here. And so that's why the workings of God on your soul is a process. In fact, we are enjoined by Jesus to bear our cross. Are you? You don't like my talk? It's good talk. Amen. Bear the cross. Carry the cross. You see, when Jesus bore that cross and was going to Golgotha, if there was a beautiful damsel by the eye, are you with me? If you are carrying a cross, going to go, the place of slaughter, and then somebody is now pointing damsel to you. See, you, you can't desire that. Why? Cross. If you are holding that cross and in transit, and somebody comes with four million, say, this is the bribe money. Because of the burden of what you are carrying, you can't desire. You can't. The cross brings to death every possible desire that can slay you. Yeah. Hallelujah. I know you didn't answer properly. That, hmm, I want to believe it's a sigh of redemption. I want to believe there's redemption there. Hey, you don't know, even as a pastor. If you don't keep your rules, because, <laughs> yeah, 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 glory. A man walking with God must be strict with himself. The moment you open your heart to a damsel, eh, you will find out that you are vulnerable. <laughs> At any point in time, you drop the cross. You drop it. When you drop the cross, eh? you know, say, ah, but this thing is okay. Your mind will begin to walk in a way that God did not ordain just because you did not cancel it out with the cross. You did not allow the sentence of death to purge that thought, to purge that desire that was rising. In order for sin to prosper in your life, you, you aided it because you removed the cross from it. You decided to give allowance. That's how you now notice that the waste, the waste. 
And you can be under the anointing and be observing waste. And the anointing will not cease. Oh. You know, God is a merciful God. But don't, don't, don't hang the 